he did against Pablo Romero of Cuba in April in Los Angeles as he knocked him down right there and followed with a subsequent knockout or stoppage of the fight. And so today, Womack, his opponent is Evander Holyfield. And Ricky Womack has become some kind of fighter. You'll recollect that he knocked out the great Pablo Romero of Cuba. That's Emmanuel Stewart of Trunk Jim fame right behind him. His opponent, however, is a tough nut for Ricky. Taller, better reach, and he may have the advantage. He has shown that advantage in two of their last three fights, winning decisions. And if you want to see what happened the last time they fought, let's go back to the National Sports Festival of 1983. Here, action. And Ricky Womack on the right. Evander Holyfield now to your right. Holyfield, though, was doing the work here. And he was scoring, and he hurt Womack right there, first with the right and then the left. And so he went on to win the decision. That's the way it was. Now we go back to live action. The fighters are in their corners, and we're about ready for the bell to ring and the light heavyweight bout, 178-pound weight limitation to take place. Ricky Womack, the public address announcer, introducing him. This kid has come very fast as a fighter under the watchful eyes of Emmanuel Stewart. And the referee is Ed Urbeck of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. He's had his Olympic training over a long period of time and indeed worked at Munich in West Germany. Scoring is done by five judges at ringside, Olympic fashion. They're all experienced men who undergo daily clinics that are intended to refurbish their skills. And the action begins. Remember Olympic rules. Must hit with the white portion of the glove. Technically, pronate the blow. 20 points maximum a fighter can get per round. And the losing fighter for the round at the dictates and judgment of the officials at ringside. So we go. Remember two, a knockdown counts no more in Olympic scoring than a cleanly scored jab. Break. Safety precautions, of course, in amateur boxing maximum, including the standing eight count, the premium factor protection of the young fighters. is right above me and so is one of the judges Paul Connor who'll be one of three American judges working the forthcoming boxing competition in the games of the 23rd Olympiad the problem for Womack will be to get through to Holyfield with the superior height and reach that's been his problem in the past but Romero beat up Holyfield of, uh, Romero beat up Rather, Womack beat up Romero of Cuba, and Romero beat up Holyfield, as I had stated. So, Womack is a developing fighter. You could see Womack's confidence saw in Los Angeles after doing away with Romero, a renowned amateur fighter. First round action, less than a minute left to go. Holyfield pushing Womack off as Womack tries to get inside to him. That's not going to help Womack. Rolling that way. You lose points that way in Olympic scoring. 
back. Stop! Stop! Back. That is what you call a caution from Ed Urbeck, the referee. No points deducted when points are deducted. For a miscue that warrants deduction, the referee will look at each judge and say, point, point, point. Coming to the end, there it is. Round two is just underway. Ricky Womack in the red. From the red corner and with the gray shirt, Evander Holyfield. I didn't like the way Womack fought that first round because you can't get points. And it was a short round, by the way. Bell rang three seconds early. Holyfield just scored well there. Holyfield's a tough cookie. And Womack's task is fundamental to get inside. But when you try to get inside by mauling and brawling, you don't get points in Olympic scoring. Womack's taking a better tactic right now. Trying to go to the midsection. Went upstairs then with the right, but then to the midsection with the left. I'll tell you, I saw a young man from the Kronk gym earlier, light middleweight Frank Tate, who I think is a sure bet for a gold medal in the games. He's become almost professional in his boxing skills. Frank Tate. But now, it's Womack to the left. Holyfield with his back toward you. Second round action. And Womack is fighting better in this round than he did in the first. He's scoring more and much more cleanly. He's got a good left up to the head. The thing about Womack is he doesn't let leave you alone. He's over you all the time. This time, he's doing it with a lot more presence and poise than he did in the first round. He is unafraid. As I said at the very start of the telecast, he will wade through punches to get his man. And that's often dangerous in tournament boxing. The thing you want to do is go in as a boxer. If you get the opportunity to knock an opponent out, that's one thing. But you never know in tournament competition what unknown will come up with an unorthodox style and surprise you. So boxing is the keynote. This is second round action. Holyfield settling down, trying to keep the opponent at bay with the reach, the use of the left. Womack with a little bit less steam than he had in the earlier going in this round. But overall, a better round for Ricky than the first round. However, Holyfield meets the standards of Olympic scorers, generally speaking, much better than Womack. Womack to the belly. And we approach the end of round two. The bell for round three. The second round was eight minutes short. The timekeeper all screwed up. Loring Baker, chairman of the American Boxing Federation, just came over to the timekeeper. He apparently was using his own wristwatch instead of the official timer, and that won't work. Under any circumstances, ready for round three. Womack, red, gray top shirt. Evanda Holyfield, Decatur, Georgia. Two out of three times previously is outpointed Womack. This is a close, tough fight. I thought Holyfield had the first round cleanly. The second round could have been scored either way. But that's a subjective opinion. May not at all be the opinion of the judges. We've had a number of upsets in this tournament so far. Number one rated Floyd Favors. 119-pound weight classification upset. Dennis Melton, touted New York fighter, upset by an unknown named Darren Allen, who was subsequently defeated roundly and soundly by Frank Tate. We had a superb fight here earlier in which the young disciple of Customato, the famed manager of Floyd Patterson in yesteryear, 
Young Mike Tyson knocked out Henry Milligan, the interesting Princetonian. <coughs> this is the third and final round of action here. Holyfield's pattern of fighting is clear. Trying to use the left. Stay away, keep Womack off him. Womack being held behind the neck, and I think referee Ed Urbeck should have gotten in there at that point. Good right to the belly by Womack. Minute 27 left and counting down in round three. Holyfield still trying to use the left and now push, using his upper body strength against the smaller Womack. Or trying to. This fight is a close one. I don't think there's any question about that. Oh, a point taken away from Womack, and that could do him in. That's what I told you about. The referee leaning over to each judge and saying, point, point, point. I don't know if Womack can come back from that, but only the scoring will tell. Fighting almost with a frenzy now, trying to get through. Still having trouble, tied up by Holyfield. Everything at stake. Womack now a world champion. I said I'd explain the box off system. Should Holyfield wind up winning the finals of the Olympic trials, he would then have to face the most noteworthy opponent who might very well be selected by the board that selects. The selection might very well be Ricky Womack because of his world championship performance against Pablo Romero of Cuba. And they would meet July 6th. Final seconds now, the fight is over. And so what appeared to be a close fight, my personal view, Holyfield won the first round. Second round could have gone either way. The third round with the point deduction may be Holyfield, but we'll have the score. We're back live at the Tarrant County Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas, awaiting the official announcement of the winner of the light heavyweight fight. Evander Holyfield to the right of your screen and Ricky Womack of Detroit. And here comes the announcement. All right, here's the decision for this bout. Number 10, the light heavyweight in the left corner, Ricky Womack. They have given it.